Hello everyone and welcome back. I decided to do this vlog because my last vlog got a lot of comments and a lot of people were passionate about it and unfortunately for the wrong reasons. And you know, I really didn't expect to get the kind of response I did as much as I did. And the fact that I did is very, very disappointing. It shows the lack of education that people have. That you just have this guy that comes along and he comes up with all these, you know, wacky policies that have already been debunked years ago. I mean, if most of the people that responded to my prior vlog actually studied real, true Austrian economics, then they would notice that Yang's nonsense doesn't work. This is nothing new. So obviously you have a lot of young people that are just getting into secondary education or maybe not getting into secondary education and obviously things are not going well for them. There's not many employment opportunities out there. And this guy comes along and they think he has all the answers. And that's because they never learned economics. They just turn on the telly and they see this guy having all these ideas of universal basic income, about suppressing automation, about VAT taxes, how he's going to get that to pay for what he's proposing, this freedom dividend thing. And they think this is the answer to all the problems. Just get a thousand dollars a month and this is the answer to all Americans' problems, right? The government handing you some money and that's going to boost economic growth and that's the answer to all our problems. Unfortunately, the people listening to this have not studied economics because an economy is not built on consumption. It's built on production. You see, production is the foundation of an economy which allows consumption. Production is the foundation of a building which you can build the rest of the building on top of. So you have the foundation of production and then you have consumption. He has it the opposite. He thinks consumption is the basis and the foundation of an economy. He thinks that you just hand people money and if they have extra money to spend then you're going to have prosperity. But that's nonsense because if that was the case then you could take a helicopter and dump a bunch of money on the rural Sahara Desert and then there's going to be instant prosperity, right? But there isn't because they have nothing to spend it on. However, if you do the opposite, if you take a bunch of equipment and a bunch of materials, machinery, and skilled workers and dump it in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Right away you're going to have instant prosperity because you have to have production before you have consumption. Because once you have production then the consumption is automatically going to be there because people are going to consume the things that are being produced. Because the things that are being produced are required for the necessities of life. See, these Keynesians, they have everything the opposite. You know, they, they have the cart pulling the horse, so to speak. Don't you get it? You have to have production. And that's the problem with the United States. They lack production. The manufacturing capacity of this country has been destroyed. All right? There are many places around the United States which are manufacturing powerhouses, which are now just rusting away which look like they're bombed out. Places like Detroit, places like Pennsylvania, right, where they had all these stale industries. I mean, you look at many cities around the country. Gary, Indiana is another one that comes to mind. I'm just giving you a few examples here. And you look at just many cities, you know, places like New Orleans, Baltimore, Camden, New Jersey. I mean, just a total wreck. And that's the problem. And now you have these goofballs out there that are saying, oh, we're going to a service sector economy. You can't have a service sector economy if you have nothing to service. Service what? Service goods that are made in China? That's servicing? Trading paper for goods? That's servicing? See, he has it all backwards. And you know why? He's an academic. I looked at this guy's background. He's an academic. He's basically an academic lawyer and unfortunately Washington is full of them. You gotta get rid of these lawyers. 
If you want to put anybody in Washington, if you do, you got to put people that are businessmen, business owners, people that run functioning, profitable businesses that trade goods for capital. That's what you need. Because people like this understand business. He doesn't understand business. Now, I'm going to debunk a lot of the stuff that he's talking about, but I'm going to debunk the heart of it. And once I do that, nothing he is offering is going to work. And I want you to listen very closely because this is something that's very important. You see, he actually has an idea of how he's going to fund this so-called freedom dividend. And I mentioned in my prior vlog, there's nothing free about it and there's nothing dividend about it. But you can watch my prior vlog and I explained that. Now, the problem with his ability to come up with this $1,000 a month, by the way, it's going to come out to around $3.8 trillion. I mean, this is a lot of money. And the way he's going to come up with it is he's going to implement a VAT tax. Now, a VAT tax is basically a value-added tax. So everywhere from the production to when they sell the product, he's going to add a tax to these goods, all right, in that vicinity. And then basically he's going to use that money to hand over to individuals. Now, people have said, well, wait a minute, you know, maybe they'll just go overseas and they'll avoid the tax, which they're doing. I mean, companies like Pfizer has, in a very smart way, I mean, they did the right thing for their company. They went overseas and they paid a low corporate tax. So people vote with their feet and corporations vote with their feet. They'll just leave. So he says, no, you know, he says, oh, they're not going to leave. They have to do business here. And then they asked him another question, all right? And this is an important one, and this is the question I have. The value-added tax is a hidden tax, and you know what it affects? Poor people. That's right. Why does it affect poor people? Because when you add a tax to a business, you see, I'm a business owner. He's not. When you add a tax to a business, it's a cost. It's like anything else, no matter what you call it. If it's a VAT tax, if it's an income tax, if it's a sales tax. If a tax is added to a business, they have to come up with the loss of that tax. It's like anything else. If you have employees, if you have rent, if you have utilities, water bills, right? General office supplies, cost of equipment. This is all a cost. And so are taxes. Now, he wants to add a 10% tax. That's a very high tax. So you know what's going to happen? A company like Amazon, which he uses as an example, sells stuff to a lot of poor people. Poor people buy from Amazon. Now, if they have to pay 10% tax now, extra, they're just going to raise their prices by 10%. So this is a hidden tax. And by the way, it's the hidden taxes. They're not declared by government. You see, what I mean is the inflation tax. The inflation tax is probably the highest, especially that the poor pay, because when the money loses value, goods go up in price. It's not the goods going up in price, it's the money losing value. If you have too much money out there in circulation, such as when the Federal Reserve prints money and they buy government debt, and then it flows into the economy. If there's too much money there and not enough goods, the price of goods go up. You see, money can be printed. Goods can't be printed. They need to be manufactured. It takes labor. It takes resources. So the money supply will go up too high, and then you have inflation. And inflation affects poor people more than anything. If you just look at the price of goods, you look at the price of housing, rent, food, poor people pay more for that than any other class. So it's a hidden tax. And when he was questioned about this, he had no response. Actually, it was an article on MSNBC's website, so you can look at that. He has not answered that question, and for a very good reason. There is no answer. You see, you know why? Because socialism fails when you go to the heart of it, when you go to the foundation. That's when socialism fails. And they went to the foundation. They said it's a hidden tax. It's going to disproportionately affect poor people. Because Amazon sells everyday goods, and a lot of those goods are sold to poor people. All right? And he doesn't just single out Amazon. He's talking about a lot of other 
companies about paying their fair share, all right? Well, I'll tell you what, when those companies pay their fair share, there's a lot of other poor people which are going to be paying their fair share as a result of that. So, you know, this is what politicians do. You see, he's not going to tell the truth. You know, he's not going to say what's really needed to be done here. You know what's needed? Draconian cuts to government spending. That's what's needed. Get the government out of the way. Let the free market declare what interest rates are. Every day, people do business. All right? They associate with each other. They make loans. People borrow money. And based on the demand, the amount of money in circulation, there's going to be an interest rate set. If the interest rate is too high or too low, they'll do business with somebody else. And that's how you get competition. This is what will help interest rates go down automatically when you have competing forces in the marketplace. He doesn't talk about this stuff because it doesn't make good politics. What makes good politics is we're going to hand you money. This way you'll have something to spend. We feel big for the poor. We have all these evil big corporations that are taking advantage of the system. That makes good politics. This riles people up. But it's not going to solve anything. And the other thing is, and this really annoys me because I have a feeling a lot of these comments that I'm seeing on my channel are just a lot of paid shills. They keep parroting the same nonsense. They keep saying, oh, you didn't read what he wrote. They're just watching him on TV or they're just paid shills or they're fake comments because they didn't read. <laughs> I read all of it. I mean, he says here, the universal basic income would permanently grow the economy by 12.56 to 13.10% or about 2.5 trillion by 2025. How does he know that? How does he come out with these exact numbers? See, this is Keynesian economics. It, they use graphs and to see where things are going and then they extrapolate where they might go. They don't understand that people have different habits. There's different technologies and innovations which cause trends to move differently. See, this is the Keynesian outlook. He's a Keynesian economist. I mean, here's more nonsense. I mean, this is just so annoying to read this. Why can't you people even see through this, this nonsense? Look, the most direct and concrete way for the government to improve your life is to send you a check for $1,000 every month and let you spend it in whatever manner will benefit you the most. The government is not... Now listen to this nonsense. This is really crazy. The government is not capable of a lot of things, but it is capable of sending large numbers of checks to large numbers of people promptly and reliably. We have plenty of resources. <laughs> They're just not being distributed to enough people right now. Let's build a new kind of economy, one that puts people first. If there's one policy that would transform American lives for the better, it is the universal basic income. Okay, I don't know where to start. Cable? Do me a favor, you non-paid shows, people that actually believe in this guy and support him, go to your browser and search debt clock, okay? And go all the way at the bottom. Forget about the $22 trillion. That's the national debt. Go all the way at the bottom where it says unfunded liabilities. Put Social Security and all the other ones together, okay? You're going to see $170 trillion. This is unfunded liabilities, which means the government has no way of paying this. You can't even wrap your head around a billion dollars. Do you know what a trillion dollars is? Let alone $170 trillion? This country is headed for a train wreck. All right? He talks about a third of humans being replaced with automation. Well, guess what? When you're going to see these unemployment lines, there's going to be robots also on those unemployment lines because they're also going to be out of a job. Where are they going to go? You see, he's thinking about step 20. He's not worried about step 1. How is the government capable of sending out checks to a lot of people? The government is broke. The government has no money. Washington is full of debt. There's no money for them to send out. And by the way, Amazon was accused of not paying taxes. Well, guess what? Their e-commerce business was bleeding red ink in billions of dollars. So they lost money in that business. They made money in the AWS business. So if they didn't pay, that may have been something to do with it. Now think about this. If they lost all this money, all right, and now they have to pay 10% extra with this VAT tax. Could you imagine what's going to happen? They're going to raise their prices substantially. They were already bleeding red ink. 
and now 10% more. So, if you believe in this kind of stuff, you know, if this guy gets his way with this universal basic income, I mean, you're talking about the price of goods going up 10%. I mean, that's basically it, and he has no answer for this. Him and his supporters are crying, math, math. Well, his math is wrong. My math is right. I'm the one who knows math. Prices are going to go up. His universal basic income is not going to work. And don't forget, he supports a lot of the socialist nonsense of his adversaries, such as Medicare for All, and then he supports student loan debt forgiveness. This is all trillions of dollars as well. You're talking about trillions and trillions of dollars more. So the deficits are going to explode. And all I ask of you, if you really want to educate yourself, stop watching the telly and Mr. Yang and learn Austrian economics. Study Hazlitt, Mises, Rothbard, Hayek, Bastiat, Manger. They talked about this stuff years ago, decades ago, all right, of how production, production is the basis of an economy. It is the foundation of an economy, not consumption. All consumption is going to do is support the countries that produce goods, such as China, okay? And the U.S. is just producing paper to trade for it. The problem is it's creating massive debts. Search the debt clock. This is the serious thing. This is something they don't talk about because it's not going to get votes. This guy is a politician. He's not being transparent. And this is why I called him a dangerous man, because he handles himself better. The other ones are crazy. The basis of communism is a guy like Karl Marx. He looks like some guy who didn't shave and shower for the past 50 years. And a guy like that, you're not going to take him that seriously. But a guy like this, you know, with his background, the way he handles himself, but he is the same as the rest of them. I mean, he's just a Keynesian. He's a consumption-based economist, Keynesian economist. He's a lawyer. Educate your minds and stop telling me to read. You read it. The ones that tell me to read his site are the ones that haven't read it. See, he says here, the universal basic income would permanently grow the economy by 12.56% to 1.3% point one zero percent or about two point five trillion by twenty twenty five this is all Keynesian economics because they look at graphs and they look at the trend of an economy how it goes that's not the way economics works economics works based on innovations on uh, different type different types of trends people's behaviors change they were, what they want to buy now is different than what they bought prior so his numbers are wrong. You see, he doesn't know math. He says he knows math. He doesn't. Here's some math for you. Production has been destroyed in this country. In the 1950s, the U.S. manufacturing was about 24% of GDP. And now it's around 11%. So there's some math. The manufacturing capacity of this country has been destroyed. So production is going way down. We already have a lot of consumption. The government's sending $1,000 to people every month to spend is not going to boost economic growth. There's too much consumption here. Americans are broke. Americans don't have any more money to spend. Americans need to save money. Interest rates need to go up. People need to save money so they can invest. They can invest in businesses and they can produce things that they can export to other countries. You understand? That's real economic growth. And when you have something like that, you have real jobs. You have productive jobs, high-paying jobs, and skilled jobs. Not a bunch of service sector jobs, which are all, a lot of the jobs being created today, which are basically in the restaurant industries and bartenders and hospitality and healthcare. These are not good jobs. In order to create good jobs, you have to have more production, not more consumption. And he's proposing more consumption. You have, don't you understand that? That's the problem. See, he's wrong. His math is way off. His numbers are way off. The economy will not improve and will not do better by 2025 if we have more consumption. The economy will go down. What's needed is more savings, not more consumption. He's wrong. His math is off. Okay, so let me know what you think. Feel free to leave comments, and thank you for tuning in.